All right, lovely people, it's the festive period for footballers, and it's fast. It's been an amazing edition of this particular World Cup over in Qatar. Many people have shared their opinion on the various games, especially from this African continent. One thing that we need to realize is each and every country fights for its own, but for the sake of the continent, it's always an African representative. Tomorrow, Ghana will be facing Uruguay. It's, it's not a really a traditional rivalry, but based on what happened in South Africa 2010, through Suarez, Ghana never progressed, and for that matter, Africa never progressed to the semi-finals of that particular edition. Ghana meets Uruguay tomorrow, and it's going to be a fierce battle. Through the press conference, Luis Suarez made a point like he's never going to apologize to we Ghanaians. And Sadiq Adams, one of the top journalists in the country, has made his opinion so, so clear. Let's listen to him. Thank you very much for joining the channel. So, we're taking some brief times um, during this World Cup period to uh, address some footballing issues, particularly related to the World Cup. And today, uh, thank God for catching you all here. I'm sure that a lot of people are in strong anticipation for the match uh, between Ghana and Uruguay tomorrow, 2nd of December, 2022. Uh, a win in that game, which could propel the Black Stars to the knockout stage of the World Cup. And uh, Uruguay have become very synonymous with heartbreak uh, in terms of Ghana. They've become rivals for, you know, uh, since that 2010 incident, the Uruguayans have become very bitter rivals of the Black Stars and every Ghanaian, every African, anywhere doesn't want to hear about Uruguay in any conversation, especially related to football. But there is one question before I come to the Uruguay game. I'm sure that a lot of you are particularly concerned about why Uruguay uh, had to select or nominate Luis Suarez to attend the presser today. Obviously, Luis Suarez is not um, a key player in this Uruguayan team, a key player as in an informed player, to be very honest. Uh, it is expected that he even starts from bench if uh, rumors and speculations from his own country are to be true. Uh, but Uruguay Fono decided to select Luis Suarez to represent them at the pre-match conference, particularly because they know how influential he is in the confines of Ghana within the Ghanaian football uh, sphere, how influential Luis Suarez is and how they can use Luis Suarez to um, incite emotions, evoke emotions of Ghanaians and to have more Ghanaians talking about the game. And when you have more Ghanaians talking about the game, basically you are putting more pressure on the team. This, this is what I believe. They, they tried to nominate Luis Suarez, say, you are the one supposed to talk. And I'm sure that for everybody who knows about um, Luis Suarez, everybody who knows about uh, Uruguayan football, that is their style. And they are schemers. They engage in what the book, White Angels of Argentina Football, the book defines as dark arts of football. Uruguayans are people who engage in the dark arts of football. They scheme. So that is what they got us in 2010. They specifically plan to go to the field to do this. And this has been the behavior and character of Luis Suarez. And all of you who know about um, uh, 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 Nunes, Darwin Nunes of Liverpool, and Fede Valverde, and uh, Fernando Muslera, all the top Uruguayan defense, Diego Gordin, they have a way, a particular way of inciting people, on, on stepping on people's emotions. This is what their football is about. It is with South American football, but particularly the people who have perfected this, are the Uruguayans. And I believe that the nomination of uh, Luis Suarez to attend the pre-match conference is particularly to incite Ghanaians, to evoke emotions of Ghanaians, attention will be on the game. Once there is attention on the game, then the Ghanaians will be under pressure to revenge. Revenge what? One, 
Luis Suarez doesn't owe any Ghanaian an apology. This is something that we must all keep on emphasizing. Luis Suarez doesn't owe any Ghanaian or African an apology. Luis Suarez played for his team. And football is about winning. Football is about helping your team in any possible way to win. Legally or illegally. Legally, you win. Illegally, if you are caught, you get the punishment for that. And if your team still goes ahead to win, you've won. That's why there are players, apart from Luis Suarez, there are so many players who have cheated in a game. There are so many players who keep on cheating. That is why there is VAR. That is why there is goal line technology. There are players who can. Look at what happened between Lai Kensin and Habib Bey in Egypt 2006. He basically prevented uh, uh, um, Lai Kensin from playing that game and, uh, I mean, consequently, not even uh, joining the Black Stars for the World Cup. So we do not have to go into this game. Luis Suarez owes us an apology. We have to go and punish him. Let's emphasize and let's just make it clear that Luis Suarez won for his team. Every other Ghanaian who is passionate enough would have done same or even worse of what Suarez did. So if we do not stop this, Luis Suarez owes us an apology. We have to punish Suarez. Suarez is not a key player in this team. We are going into this team to play against the likes of Ben Tanko. We are going to play against Freddy Ververde, Darwin Nunes. These are the players that we should be concerned. Suarez is still dangerous. But we are going to play Uruguay. We are not going to play against the Uruguayan side of 2010. And for that fact, we need to revenge. There is no revenge anywhere. If we go into that game thinking of revenge, Ghanaians will uh, and, uh, come out of that game more better than we did in 2010. Because we have the upper hand. We have our work cut out for us. If we are able to draw against Uruguay, we stand a very high chance of progressing to the next stage of the World Cup. What do we need to go and beat Uruguay at all costs and punish them? If we win, fine. But they are now under pressure. Why are they trying to turn the pressure on Ghanaians? Clearly, if you can listen and read from the pre-match conference the uruguayans are trying to turn the pressure on Ghanaians. they have one point we have three points we need one point to be able to progress even if you don't need one point and thinking that portugal may lose to south korea or whatever we just need to win against uruguay or draw what is the design to be able to get the needed points to progress the design should not be about... We should even take out the fact that we are playing Uruguay. That is basically it. We should take out, we should exclude or exempt from our thoughts the fact that we are playing Uruguay. We are playing an opponent in the World Cup. Whether it's Uruguay or not, we are not going in for a revenge. Otherwise, they will turn the pressure on us. They will turn everything unto us. That as if Ghana is going into this game without a point. We are going into the game with three points. They have one. We are superior in the group. We need to play according to our plan and not play according to what Uruguayans are saying and thinking. 2010 is past and gone. It's been 12 years for God knows why and how. Why do we have to let uh, Uruguay revenge, revenge, revenge be the talk of town? There are so many games that Ghana has lost in AFCON at the World Cup because we failed to prepare and psych our minds, the, the pre-game talks entered into the players. I have been following the Black Stars for some time. In 2013, a 2012 AFCON in Gabon, Equatorial Guinea, Ghana had the best of opportunity to qualify to the final and win it. Senegal had gone out, all the big teams were out, Cameroon, Nigeria. It was left with Ghana and Ivory Coast. And then, before we even beat Zambia, the underdogs in the semi-finals, the Black Stars and Ghanaian fans had already started talking about going to revenge against Ivory Coast for uh, uh, Senegal 92. We were supposed to prepare for the semi-final game against Hervé Renard's Zambia. Then the talks in Ghana, the media, and it entered into the players that Ivory Coast have already qualified. Ghana is yet to play in the semi-finals against Zambia. But the talk in Ghana was 
from authorities of the officials of the team to the fans, the masses, which literally transmitted to the players. Ghanaians were preparing to go and do a revenge against Ivory Coast because of AFCON uh, 92, Senegal 92, they beat us in the final. We have an opportunity, we have the best team. So now that we are here, we are going to beat them. At the end of the day, Zambia by, by Mayuka and Co. beat us by one nail in the semi-final. Clearly, we were not prepared for that game because the talks was about Ghana going to beat Zamb uh, uh, Ivory Coast in the final and revenge. These things do not help. And I'm glad that Otoado and his technical team are very smart on this and not letting this enter into the players. It is not about Luis Suarez and Portugal. Ghana is playing a World Cup opponent. Ghana has three points. Ghana stands superior. Ghana can design and implement a game plan to be able to get the needed points to progress without looking at the opponents, without looking at the background of the match, without going into why we need a revenge. We can basically design a game plan to suit us and win. Why do we have to go and revenge? What is the talk about Suarez? Suarez doesn't need to apologize to us. One, Uruguay beat us in 2010 to win and progress to the semifinals. We lost. That is the story. There is nothing beyond it. No matter how painful that story was, Uruguay beat us to progress to the next stage of the World Cup. Why do we need to call on Suarez to revenge, a uh, 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 revenge on Suarez, or call on him to apologize? Then we have to call on Portugal to apologize to us because they beat us in 2014 World Cup. We have to call on Zambia. We have to call on Ivory Coast, all the teams that are beating us in crucial games, to apologize when we meet them. This is football. I think that if we are not careful, and people always say, oh, this is not about the players, it's about the fans saying it. Look, when the Black Stars suddenly dropped or declined, it was not because we did not have players. At some point, it is the energy and conversations by the fans that is able to instigate the sort of passion and style of play of the players. And you all know, when a club is in form, and you see the energy of the fans, it literally translates into how the players play. So you cannot say, oh, the fans here, yeah, we have to say whatever we want. We, we, we have to play against Uruguay and plan a, a style to be able to get the points that we need. A point or points. At the end of the day, if we win, we have, uh, 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 I don't know how to put it, but we have applied or we have also retaliated in a sense that they will feel the pain. If we do not win, that would mean that we had not prepared adequately for this, for this game. And we had only prepared because we want to go and beat Suarez, who may not even be part, an influential part of the team. So this is simply it. Otuado must go into the game thinking that we are playing against a World Cup opponent who we don't have any idea about, whose players we have read and profiled and analyzed and upon this that we are going to play technically. Nothing from 2010 will work. First of all, Suarez had already had an interview saying they have beaten Ghana and they know how to beat Ghana. They have beaten Portugal before. They have beaten South Korea before. They were not able to beat South Korea. They know that when it comes to African teams, the mentality of our teams, I mean, mostly we are very weak when it comes to mentality, when it comes to dealing with psychology. So everybody would want to start the pre-match game cycle the talks should be about how to unsettle them how to frustrate them how to leave them distracted and then we can pounce anybody who is watching the game from ghana will say if uruguay scored the first goal hey these people have done it to us again we will never forget them meanwhile the game is not over so they want this kind of stories and tricks and schemes and plotting to get to ghanaians and when it gets to Ghanaians, the, the energy will automatically transmit to the players who on the field. It happens. It is part of football. You can never discount the fact that whatever the fans discuss, what the fans want, in a way, influences the outcome of matches by how the players will play. So I, I just entreat the officials to know that Uruguay and Luis Suarez do not owe Ghana any apology. And we do not have to avert or go into the game to... to um, inflict any sort of revenge. 
we cannot go into the game with the thinking that we are going to inflict. So there's one popular saying that I always want to repeat. We don't go into a football match saying we are going to do a miracle. If you know that you are going to do a miracle, then it's not a miracle. Miracles are things that are not planned. Miracles are things that are supernatural. There are things that, that, that seem as an upset. There are things that is not taught. So if you are going into the game knowing that you are going to cause a miracle, then it's not a miracle. It is destined to happen. So we do not have to plan and say we are going to um, um, a revenge against Uruguay. We are going to inflict a painful revenge. That will mean that you already know the results of the game, which we do not. The game is unpredictable. This will be one of the most difficult games we have played at the World Cup. An Uruguayan side staring at an elimination from the group stage upon all what they've done and the quality players they have coming up against Ghana, a team that they have played before. So they are the ones that are below us. We are superior. They are inferior in terms of the points accumulation. So we do not have to go into the game playing to the mind games of Uruguay. We don't have to. And I'm sure that Otuado and his boys are well aware of what I'm saying and will not let this influence or have any sort of bad energy on the team. And we have to go into the game planning, strategically scheming to be able to do what the Uruguayans think they will be able to do to us. That is the only way we can be able to come out victorious. We need a draw or a win to be able to qualify. We do not have to rush into the game to go and punish Luis Suarez. He's done nothing to Ghanaians. He only helped his team in a manner that a lot of Ghanaian players would have done same when, when the opportunity is presented to them. So this is why uh, I, I just had to come live and then discuss a lot uh, of these um, matters surrounding the Ghana versus Uruguay game. So uh, I, I can see that a lot of people are watching uh, if anybody has a question before I wrap up on this Ghana Uruguay and whether Suarez needs to apologize to us or not, can just um, uh, if there's any question you would want me to touch on before I end. Uh, so briefly, uh, if there is any question from anyone watching, I'll be waiting to answer them and then proceed. Maybe we uh, we we try and preview the game um, in the evening and also for our viewers who are not based in Ghana and who have not had the opportunity of hearing from us. So uh, if anybody has a question, I'll be answering them in the next uh, two or three minutes. Then we end this live show. Okay. Uh, which approach do you think Ghana needs attack or defend? I've watched Ghana's two games and a lot of people seem uh, to be quiet, uh, be sitting on tenterhooks when we start. That is how I envisaged Ghana's campaign to be. We do not have a very solid team. And I say team, we have players, but we do not have a team yet. And it's good that Otuado is gradually building a very solid team. The approach should always be that we are a team that is weaker coming into the World Cup. And how the boys defend, it's, it's very impeccable. How they defend, how they are able to soak the pressure early on. We did against Portugal, we did against uh, South Korea. Even though, uh, I mean, it puts people in a lot of anxiety, the tension is there, they are still defending, but I believe that this is the best way for, for us to go into the game. Not go into the game with the thinking that we need to beat them. Calm down, slow the pace of the game, and restart with pace when you need to. We have very fast wingers and right backs. We have very fast midfielders in Kudus and the others. We have players who can dribble and, and turn around the game or just change transition within the, the blink of an eye. So we have all the guys in the center of the field, very solid defenders and party with Salisu had been the steel, the wall, the, uh, I mean, in front of the defense. They have done well and they protect this for more than 15, 20 minutes of the game when we start before we settle. The only important thing is that we do not concede, but the approach should be the same approach we have used in the previous two games. Learn how the opponent will come into the game. Study it, prepare your game plan, or if you have your game plan, go into, into the game with it by not hurriedly going in for goals and exposing your rail. That would be very dangerous. Uh, well said. 
At times, we as Ghanaians talk too much. Let's forget about Suarez. It's difficult to forget, but we have to pray that we do not let this um, have any influence on the game. We don't have to let this get any influence. And if Suarez plays, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure that he will be trying as much as possible to score a goal against Ghana to, end, to validate what he did in 2010. And if he comes into the game with that mentality, our defenders need to be very strong in dealing with him because that guy is a demon. And that guy is an absolute monster when he needs a goal. Even though he doesn't have the energy, he can just conjure within a minute to fight like a lion and get the goal. Just to, and he knows that a goal from him, Luis Suarez, will all kill the ambitions of Ghana in the game, psychologically. And they have planned all this. Uruguay has mastered the dark arts. How they've managed to turn the pressure. That's Michael Baden, exactly what I'm, I'm saying. Uh, they have a way of calling that in their uh, native Uruguay. They have a, a native name of that. They are a very small country, very little I mean, population. But they, they are very good at football and they are very robust and aggressive style of football. I think the attention and pressure should be on Ghana dealing with Fede Verde's long drives and energy and, and, and his incisive passes. These are the players that we need to deal with. And their aerial ability, we know how they are very strong aerially. These are things that we should be talking about. Um, Nkwasi Fugu Parliament, uh, interesting name. I say, hi, Sadiq. Um, uh, how about the referee who took the first penalty against Ghana? Has FIFA sanctioned him yet? Well, well, that referee has not been given any game yet per my checks. He's not officiated any game yet and he's not on the roster. I don't know if he's uh, been suspended, but everything points to the fact that uh, he's not been given a game yet. I don't know, but... Uh, there was a Ghanaian former FIFA referee who was saying that what he did was um, uh, tantamount to being um, sacked. So definitely, let's see what happens. Um, uh, let me see another question. Okay, thanks. Um, let me take two questions before I end the live uh, show. Let's see. Uh, there is someone here. Okay. Uh, can okay. I like the positive talk. Okay, we just need to go in and beat them. This guy is hot. <laughs> we just need to go. Okay, let's let's wait and see. Uh, what will be your starting 11? Uh, Rachel, well, it will be very difficult, but I'll stick to the team. I'll stick to the team that played against um, South Korea because of the experience. And the Uruguayans are going to run a lot in this game, they are going to run a lot, and we need to map a strategy to deal with them and not run according to the pace. That they want um yeah that's my my view so guys subscribe the first one share to your other platforms with your friends and make sure you hit the like button until later peter is your analyst